Look to the right, look to the left. What do you see? Your answers may vary, but it's unlikely that your answer will be dark matter. I think almost everyone has heard something about dark matter, but didn't understand what it is and how it can exist. In this video, I will explain what dark matter is and why physicists are confident in its existence. In the 1930s, it was discovered that galaxies in the Virgo cluster were not moving as predicted by calculations. For observations to match the theory, the mass of the cluster had to be 400 times greater than what was known, as if there was some hidden mass not accounted for by astronomers. Thus arose the first suspicion that there was some invisible mass. But already in 1970, American astronomer Vera Rubin observed spiral galaxies and found that stars at all distances from the center of the galaxy rotate at almost the same speed. This contradicts the theory of gravity. When rotating around a central body under the influence of gravity, the farther away it is, the slower the speed. For example, the average orbital speed of Mercury is 48 kilometers per second, while the average orbital speed of Earth is 30 kilometers per second and Pluto's is even just four and a half kilometers per second. A similar dependence was expected for the motion of stars around the galactic center, but the same speed of stars at all distances from the center of the galaxy contradicts this dependence. In theory, stars at the edges of the galaxy should have dispersed because they have too much speed, and then we wouldn't be able to observe such beautiful spiral galaxies. Does this mean that Einstein was wrong with his theory of gravity? Scientists didn't like this idea because in all other cases, Einstein's general theory of relativity accurately describes experimental data. Therefore, perhaps the problem is not with the theory of gravity, but simply, we cannot see all the matter. Thus, they explained the paradox of the same speed of stars at all distances from the center of the galaxy, suggesting that there is some hidden mass that we cannot detect. But it is gravitationally linked to ordinary matter and prevents stars and galaxies from dispersing. Cosmological models show that the observed mass in galaxies is insufficient for their formation. Gravity forces would not be able to overcome the kinetic energy of individual components. Everything would have dispersed throughout the universe. And such beautiful star clusters simply wouldn't exist. A lot of evidence indicates that there is some unaccounted for mass, the gravity of which fundamentally changes the behavior of galaxies. There were suggestions that it could be weakly emitting brown dwarfs, black holes, intergalactic gas. All of this is called the funny acronym MACHO. But they would somehow emit some radiation, given that there is so much hidden matter. A huge number of scientists tried to find what could be hiding behind dark matter, but nothing worked out. So, there was only one way out. To admit that, most likely, there are invisible particles of a completely different nature, which were called dark matter, not because it is dark, but because of its unknown nature. The peculiarity of these particles is that they do not participate in electromagnetic interactions, so we cannot see them because they do not emit, absorb, or scatter any light, radio waves, X-rays, or any other electromagnetic waves that we use to study the universe. Also, dark matter passes through us, the Earth, the Sun, unhindered, and this is not felt at all. Why is that? I'll explain now. For example, when an apple falls to the ground, why doesn't it pass through it? Because the electrons of the apple are repelled by the electrons of the earth and objects technically don't even touch each other and the apple seems to levitate at a very small height. For the same reason, your hand doesn't pass through the floor, through you, through walls. This law does not apply to dark matter particles because they do not participate in electromagnetic interactions. Moreover, we believe that they are not subject to nuclear interactions either, so they pass through atoms unhindered. That is, dark matter behaves like ghosts passing through walls. But how can we find dark matter if it can essentially pass through our fingers? The thing is, one type of interaction is inherent to dark matter, gravity. And one of the most important tools for searching for dark matter is gravitational lensing. This method allows us to determine the mass of large cosmic structures, such as galaxies and galaxy clusters, in accordance with the theory of relativity. The mass of matter can influence the surrounding space, deforming it and bending light rays. Thus, when light passes through large clusters of dark matter, 
its gravity distorts the light beam and forms an arc. By measuring the geometric parameters of the arc, scientists conclude the presence of invisible matter and calculate its mass. Thus, by measuring the gravitational influence of dark matter on ordinary matter, scientists create maps of dark matter concentration in space. If dark matter is matter, then, like ordinary matter, it should consist of some particles. We know 17 particles that make up the world. They form the standard model, and none of them resemble dark matter. Most likely, new particles will have to be added to them. There is even a name already, Weakly Interacting Massive Particle, abbreviated as WIMP. But this is not the same as a new element in the periodic table of elements. Here, one would have to revise all of quantum physics, and as a physics student, on one hand, this fact is unpleasant. But on the other hand, physicists will have more work and new discoveries. Scientists are trying to directly detect WIMPs using accelerators, but unlike the very popular Higgs bosons at the Large Hadron Collider, no WIMPs have been detected yet. If you think that dark matter is somewhere in space and doesn't affect you, then I must warn you that at this very moment, as you watch this video, millions, or maybe even billions, of dark matter particles are passing through your body. But don't worry, your health is not at risk, because as I mentioned earlier, dark matter particles do not interact with particles of the standard model, that is, with the particles of the atoms in your body. Dark matter exists in the form of vast, voluminous, invisible halos surrounding galaxies, including our Milky Way, and everything seems insignificant until we start talking about numbers. The total mass of dark matter is significantly greater than that of ordinary matter. For example, in the Milky Way, 95% of the entire mass of the galaxy is composed of dark matter. This is incredibly large and changes all the rules of the game because, on the contrary, it is dark matter dictates what galaxies will be like and where exactly. In those places where its concentration is higher, ordinary visible matter accumulates, which then forms stars, planets, and ultimately us. Dark matter plays a central role in models of the formation of the large-scale structure of the universe and the evolution of galaxies. In simpler terms, dark matter essentially forms the framework that fills ordinary matter, allowing for the formation of such outstanding and large structures as galaxies and galaxy clusters, as well as the so-called cosmic web or universe filament on which the picture of our world is woven. The concentration of dark matter in space varies significantly. For example, in our galaxy, it is most concentrated closer to the center of the Milky Way. However, scientists were shocked when they discovered a galaxy that contains no dark matter at all. We're talking about the galaxy NGC 1052 DF2, located in the constellation of Cetus. The almost complete absence of dark matter in a galaxy was a real surprise because scientists had previously believed that galaxies cannot form without this mysterious substance. So what caused such a strange, uneven distribution of this substance in the universe? Unfortunately, scientists cannot yet answer this question. But of course, this mystery will eventually be revealed, and it will be a big leap forward for science. Today we know that dark matter is a kind of governing force that, thanks to its gravitational influence on ordinary matter, creates and organizes such large structures as galaxies and galaxy clusters. The birth of dark matter is linked to the moment of the Big Bang, and it appeared almost immediately in the first second after the birth of the universe, even before ordinary matter, and from the very beginning, it began to dominate in the universe. Thus, it was thanks to dark matter that the first stars and the first galaxies formed. The most astonishing fact is that dark matter and ordinary matter together make up not even the majority of our universe. The predominant portion of our universe is composed of dark energy. What it is and how we know about its existence will be the subject of our next video. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it.